In this video, we're going to talk about creating your own custom table of contents. Okay, let's get started here. So, first of all, let's talk about why you'd want to create a custom table of contents. Very briefly, um, my own experience is that the built-in functionality, while a great solution. I'm, sure, I'm I'm glad that Adobe Captivate has included a table of contents feature, but you know it really isn't customizable enough. It certainly gives you the ability to create uh, a table of contents, and you can change a lot of the settings. You can change the colors, and you can change which uh, pages show up on the table of contents. But it really doesn't give you a lot of control over placement and. Uh, when I showed it a number of years ago to one of my clients, they selected uh, the option to have me create something a little bit more custom. And with Adobe Captivate 9, it's actually now uh, much improved over how it was before. Uh, Multi-state objects really allows me to create dynamic rollover effects for all of these objects that I use as buttons. So, you know, I'm pretty pleased with the results. There's a few things that I lost going from Captivate 8 to 9. Um, mainly the big thing for me was that I could have um, rollover effects on buttons on the master slide. Can't seem to do that anymore in Captivate 9. So, the solution for me is to make sure that I get one button just the way you want it and then duplicate it from there and of course make the changes as you go. Um, and then of course duplicate it for all the applicable slides in your course. So in this particular course I think I've got 13 different buttons and this set, this table of contents set, needs to appear on all 13 of those pages. So when you do the math that's 169 objects as buttons and because they're multi-state objects as buttons um, I need to make a rollover effect, so that, multiply it by 2 again, that's 338 different states that I'm responsible for. <laughs> so make sure you get your first button right, then check the first page, and then check two pages, and so on. You don't want to create, um, you know, 338 different multi-state object states and find out that you made a mistake on the first button and it got duplicated to all the remaining buttons. So here's my process. So what, what you see on your screen right now is I've got a set of objects as buttons. These are sh uh, just simple uh, smart shapes that I'm using as a button. And the action for all of these, and I've, I've placed these specifically on a slide that is not included as one of the 13 links that I'll be linking to or jump to slides and there's a reason for that um, and I'll go into that in a little bit. So let's take a look at the first button here. There's a couple things you want to make sure of. Of course with timing you want to make sure that it's displaying for the rest of slide. Um, for properties you want to make sure that it's use as button of course and you're going to select the up state, the natural state, or the normal state for how this button will appear. So in this particular case, uh, it's just going to be a white background. Uh, I'm not going to concern myself with the stroke because they won't see it. It'll be zero. 100% opacity for the fill color. The font I'm using just happens to be the font that they use for their corporate branding and the color I'm using is just black because of course black is the most readable color. I've set up some margins so left and right 10 so we have uh, a little space between the left and right hand side of the button and a little space uh, between the top and the bottom that works well for this button size. So that's pretty much it. Now I'm going to add multiple states so there's two ways you can do this. You can go into state view which allows you to then see that button and add new states from over here from the object state panel. Alternatively, you can actually just do this from the object state within the regular properties panel. So here's the normal state. We've got that 
that's fine. We're just going to click on the plus icon next to the object state to create a new state. And this is actually appearing over on my other screen, but it's giving me the option to create a rollover state. I'm going to click OK. And there's my rollover state. Now what I want to do is make some changes to that state so that when the mouse rolls over the button, it's going to change to the green that this particular company uses within their branding. So I'm actually going to select that off of another object on the page. And we'll just do that from this little bar right here. You can see now the rollover effect will be the changing of the button to green. And we're going to change the color of the text as well to white. So it'll give it that sort of effect there. It's very similar to what this company's website uses for their navigation controls. And what you're going to want to do is now duplicate that for all of the buttons on this particular page. Um, once you've done that, and let's just assume that I've done that, we'll return this to the normal state so it looks normal. We're going to set an action for each one of these buttons. And what I recommend is that for all of the pages that these buttons are going to jump to, you're going to want to set up um, a title within the properties panel. So for example, the, the page that I'm on right now is called Course Instructions. You can type that right into uh, when you just click somewhere off in the scrap area and you look at the properties panel for this slide. It'll give you the option to type in course instructions. Um, and then, of course, I can do that for all of the remaining other slides within this course that I'm planning to navigate to. The reason you do that, and this is strictly optional, it just makes it a lot easier to find the right links when you're setting up your table of contents. So, for example, the GTAA policies, we're going to change that action to jump to slide and in this case we're looking for uh, slide number four. I know it says something different here but these are actually the names of the two policies that that, that that button is referring to. And we can do the same thing for our introduction button. We'll jump to slide and again we're looking for number five because that's the introduction slide. You are the target will become slide number six because it's you are the target. So you can see it's very easy to match those up. Once you're done, once you've done that to, you know, and, and test it, preview it, make sure it works. Make sure everything uh, is working the way that you want it to do. There's one other thing before we get into copying this to other slides is that you're going to want to check something here. And if we go into the Edit drop-down menu and select Preferences, and what we're looking for is we're looking for the quiz preferences, and we're looking for the type of quiz and how it's set up. Um, if I go down to um, Settings underneath Quiz and look here, uh, Required, and the drop down here, there are four choices available. So in this particular course, I have knowledge checks uh, every couple of slides or so. And of course, I have a final quiz at the end of the course. If I set it the way I've got it right now, answer all, the user must answer every question to continue. What's going to happen is that it's going to prevent them from navigating past any question slides, including knowledge checks. Even though the knowledge checks don't contribute to the final score, they are still question slides. If I make this optional, which is the first option, the user can then of course click on any of those buttons at any time within the table of contents. Now, neither one of those scenarios is correct. It's obviously up to you and perhaps it's up to your client as well. Um, but the reason that I bring this up is that if you set it the way I've got it here, and this is actually the way this particular client wants it, they don't want users to be able to skip content. 
So the end result to, of this, if I select answer all, the user must answer every question. And if they try to click on the conclusion button before they've reached the conclusion page, it won't take them anywhere. It won't allow them to navigate to that point. They can only be, they'll only be able to click on the items that they've already visited or the items that there is no knowledge check question between them and that particular page of content. Hopefully that's clear. So once you have a fully working set, and again, I encourage you strongly to preview this every step of the way. Make sure that page one is working, and then make sure that page two is working. What you can do is now select all of these buttons, as I've done here, select copy, and then of course you can now paste it onto any of the pages where the table of contents will be applicable. Now there's something to keep in mind about pasting it into certain pages. So all of these are fine. All of those jump to slide success actions are fine. The only one that's not going to be fine is this first one because now I'm actually on the GTAA policies page. And what it does um, is that it points to, because of this link previously pointed to the same slide that we're pasting it onto, that action gets converted to continue, a continue action. So my advice would be to convert these because we are already on this page, clicking it's not going to take us anywhere else, to change this to no action. And in fact, you can take it a step further you can actually change the button itself. You could actually uncheck it and not use it as a button at all because, of course, once we're on this page, uh, clicking that button won't, wouldn't do anything anyway. But you could also change the style of the button as well. So you could select a color, for example, and then change that button so that it's clear to the user that this is where we are on the table of contents. And as they progress through the course, that would move down across all of your table of contents. So hopefully that helps you. Uh, that explains my workflow for uh, creating a custom table of contents for your client. Uh, guys, if you like these videos that I am producing for you, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you thought this video was useful, helpful, entertaining, educational, go ahead and give me a thumbs up.